April 26th. We are on air. Right so far, we have Caitlin and Sabrina. And Caitlin just started talking about her experiences. Caitlin, can you start from the beginning? You yesterday came out, and there was something interesting. Uh, um, last night, well, usually I do have experiences with them in my dreams. But um, lately, I haven't been having that because. I don't know, it's just weird, but um, I went out last night and I started seeing uh, flashes around my house, like light, it looked like a force field kind of, like it was weird, but it was like flashing, and I was like, what is that, because it would be normal, and it, it looked like an aura kind of, like circulating or something, but it was, it was an aura type thing, and it was flashing, and I was like, what is that, <laughs> and then, um, like there's millions of stars outside my house now, and usually it's not like that, you know? It's never, there's usually never stars in my area, so I was like, and, these, and it's funny because these stars are literally in the area of my house, so it's like, I like them, I just know it, because I feel it, so, um, I see the shooting star also, and I was like, oh, I've seen the shooting star twice now, and I, it's never like that in my area, because my area is really, it's, it's just a terrible area, and it's, you never expect that stuff, so it's kind of obvious that it's them. And I know it's them because I'm empathic and I can kind of just feel things and stuff. So it's just, it's cool. And it's the real deal. So that's why I think this really needs to get popular, you know, because it's the real thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The dreams are the real thing, too. You, like, I actually held their hands and stuff. Like, oh, wow. I could feel their hands, too. And, just, and they were really nice towards me. And there was this one girl I met, and she was purple. She purple? <laughs> Yeah, purple. She's she really pretty. She was purple. Uh -huh. She looked about my age, and she had orange hair, like fluorescent orange hair. She said, you're coming with me. And I'm like, what? Because I was at my school. It was in my school. And then she was, there was a group of people circulating around, and I was like, what's going on here? And I opened my eyes, and it was, I started walking, and I wasn't, I didn't mean to walk. And she was like, you're the one. You're the one I must take with me. And I'm like, what? And then she started, like, taking me outside the school and I seen a whole bunch of like a cluster of stars and it looked like these ships right and she's like hold on a second and she disappeared and then I got beamed up and I was sitting beside these two aliens there was um, one on the other side the, there was two sitting beside each other and I looked at them and I didn't get a bad impression from them so I was like okay maybe I should just sit here and do nothing and then the one just grabbed my hand it was holding it and I actually could feel his hand like the warmth of it not the warmth it was cold it was cold hand but he was smiling at me and I was like oh they're so they're actually really cute aliens I'm not kidding they are so cute and I don't want to be weird saying that they are adorable and I seen Sabrina's drawings too they are actually legit the one in the middle it actually kind of it resembled one that I did have a dream of kind of because the one of the aliens I did meet it was brown and it had human type eyes but they were huge and they were blue and I was like oh my gosh it was sitting beside me and it was just talking to me but I can't oh really what I'm saying. but do you yeah. don't you don't have recollections of conversations with them? No, um, some of them, some of them I do, some of them I don't. The Yael that I talked to, he would, I could full out remember what he was saying to me. He was trying to guide me to some queen of Azura, of Andromeda, apparently. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I really want to know more about her, but I, I don't know. It, like, why would she want to talk to me out of all people? That's what I really wonder. But you know. Um, I could hear her voice too, but I don't really remember what she was saying, but she was trying to guide me to her ship, and I was like, and I just woke up, and I was really ticked off because I was so close to just meeting her, but yeah. Well, there is a queen in Andromeda, yeah, and, um, she, uh, uses, what is it, uh, not, they don't come physically, they send you in your mind to their planet, so... Astral projection? Astral projection, that's what it's Technology called. assisted astral uh, yeah. projection. Technology assisted astral projection. So yeah, yeah you were probably almost there. Or do, do you know that if you say Andromeda, it doesn't really... It helps a bit, but it's a whole galaxy with billions of stars, so we don't really know the names of those stars. That could be Tons of those, ah. but uh, this queen of uh, Uri, we, we know her through the Karaya, and oh yeah, I seen her. She's really nice. Oh, I didn't see her, but I mean, like, I heard 
Yes. Uh -huh. Uri, yeah. yeah. And we, we, we call this planet Utopia 5. So we know a lot about this specific planet, although we don't know where. where oh, we don't know more. We have a tape, I think. Oh, I remember. I forgot the tape. Hmm. What, you mean like a uh, sticky tape? Oh, OK. I yeah. have a uh, regular tape here. All right. Excellent. Let's open the package. Please keep discussing. I'm almost done. OK. <laughs> uh, Sabrina, I, I, if you want to put on record your experience with uh, with multiple languages and somebody speaking through you, that would be interesting. Um, so this weekend, um, actually, not this weekend, two, three days ago, I was outside. And I actually ended up with my mouth sore from speaking so many different languages. <laughs> um, but um, mainly what I was doing, I was sort of trying to give energy to Mother Nature and help it. Um, <clears throat> since, you know, I have a lot of trees and a big yard. Uh -huh. um, so I was sitting there. And and I was doing this for a while, and then I just said, oh, I should tape this um, so that I can ask what language it is. And, and then I played it for Lakash, and he told me that one of the languages was a uh, reptilian language of a civilization that at the moment have nothing to do with us. Um, and they're very far away. Uh, he, I believe he said he's from the Taurus constellation. Um, and when I played it for him, he says that they were all questions, so I must have been channeling somebody from that civilization at that particular moment. And I was just asking, like, how do you know this language? Who taught you this language? What are you doing speaking this language? Um, but it seems that they're benevolent and they're very advanced. And he says that they looked, they look um, more human at this point. So, and he was actually surprised that I could speak that language. Cool. So, so yeah, I was like, it's like, because it sounded sort of like Illyrian <coughs> when, when Jaguar was speaking it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it sounds, yeah, it did sound a little Arcturian now that I think about it. So that was that one. I don't know what the other ones were. Uh, I know one of them was Pleiadian, and I don't know what the other one was. Alright, so we should start, I guess. I will start okay. back in the drum. Oh, okay. Do we invite anybody specific? I think what, what we would like to have... Now it's the close. It's too, too, too far. We need you closer. I will move things closer. Who, who do we want to invite? I think best would be if uh, uh, somebody comes and speaks to Sabrina in all those languages. That would be interesting. Or anybody else who, you know, let's speak more languages and learn more of the languages. I think that would be great. Speaking uh, galactic languages, that would be the topic. Hi, Jim and Max. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey. Hey. Hi, Hi, Sophia. Good, good morning. Good nice morning. Nice to see you guys. Yes, and we're, <laughs> we're almost ready. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Who's that behind you? Oh, oh. Uh, let's just be in spirit. I don't know. <laughs> I saw somebody go behind you when you flashed on there. I saw somebody go behind you when you flashed on there. Oh dear, it's all, it can only be a spirit. It was, it was behind you, I'm serious. 
Oh, really? What can it's you ask? It's on record. It's, on, it's record. on record. I saw it go right behind you. Oh, oh I want to see it. Or see who, who, who was that? Is was it was it a good spirit? <laughs> no, it's pretty big though. Oh my goodness! Please send it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> if it's friendly, you'd you'd be okay. But I just saw something go behind you. Maybe it was my. Maybe you flashed your hands or something. I don't know, but it looked like it went behind you. Oops! 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 <laughs> so it'll be okay. You're protected. Yeah, thank Touch you. yourself, yep. Okay. Interesting. How are you, Max? I will tell you after this, the, the channeling, but uh, <laughs> I had a couple of good days of... Uh, you know, it's always mainstream, but mainstream, very unlikely things happened in the sequence, so, so it was interesting. I had a couple of days of, <clears throat> of interesting life. Good. <laughs> Um, how about, um, so what do we, I wanted to invite more, but you know, I think let's focus on one thing, focus on Sabrina speaking to um, languages, and let's learn more of the languages. Uh, like, if you, if you meet an alien, an alien asks you, where from are you, and you say, I am from Earth, and he asks uh, where it is. Can you describe the location? No. Solar system? Yeah. Where is it? Like side of Milky Way galaxy? Yes, the far edge. <laughs> far edge of Milky Way galaxy. It's funny that we don't know where we are. Yes, we don't really know how to describe where we are. That's, that's true. Because right. they may not even know our terms right. so, for where we are. All right. Uh, that's about it. Uh, Today we have a small crowd, so feel free to ask more questions and uh, see how it goes. I, I would like to focus on mostly on languages and we'll see how it goes. Sabrina is already speaking from here. No, just vacuum cleaner. You may, we may, uh, we will talk to you later. Too.
Hello. Lakesh. Yes. Welcome. How are you? One moment, please. All right. It was difficult getting here today. Okay, I see. I am not sure why. You uh, last time you upgraded your system. Maybe it will upgrade to sort of different. Let me make some adjustments. Sure. That is better. Hey, Lakesh. Max. We have Gabriel. Yes. Hayan. Hayan. Caitlin. Caitlin. Ravi. Ravi. Sephira. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. And Swish. And everybody can uh, say hi. Unmute your microphone. Hello, Lakesh. Hello. Hello, Lakesh. Greetings. Hello, Lakesh. Yes. How is your granddaughter? Ah, oh, she is wonderful. <laughs> Good. She is very chakra ticklish. <laughs> yes, I make her laugh much. Yes. That's sweet. Sweet. So you lo you make her laugh without touching her, just touching her chakras. Her chakras are sensitive, and she laughs when they are caressed. Yes. Do you move hands for that? You can move hands. You can do it many ways. It's fun. Uh huh. She has. Oh. Much do you have breastfeeding over there? What is she eating at this age? Breastfeeding, very little. But yes, there is a time for that. But it does not start at the immediate time of birth. One month of the birth, and it lasts only for two months. Okay. This is for the immune system of the child. Mm -hmm. If you start too early, the immune system has got to breathe in the planet air first be for a little while before breastfeeding begins, at least on our world. I see. So what does she eat otherwise then, or drink? There are special things that we give her that mm -hmm. are made for children. Okay. Her. Thank you. <laughs> Mostly liquid form at this time. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar. Yes, it is part of how, what is natural for birth in many cultures and species. Yeah, our, our, uh, one of our children, he is so picky when he eats. So he says he's dreaming about the time when you would just get some sort of universal food tablet which would contain everything. Ah. <laughs> Yes, I know who. That is Michael. Nope. Is Sam? Nope. One of your children, not Michael or Sam. Yeah. I would think Michael. No, no, that, you know, we have five, so. That was just a guess. <laughs> no, Michael wants to try everything. He's not that picky. He would love to try the new food. That is why I guess that it would be him, because everything would be in a tablet and he would be able to taste it, all the different things. Ah. Um, Sabrina, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Why is your camera is on? Is not on? Oh, I had turned it off. Oh, I see. Would you like uh, Lakesh to... Uh, I would love to you to speak to Lakesh in your languages. Is it, Lakesh, would it be appropriate? There is some languages that she speaks that are together with other dialects of the same species. Just like on your planet, there is different languages. When they were given to her, the three languages were meshed together. She is now separating them. And that is fine. I can understand most of what she says unless she mixes them up. It makes it more he, difficult for the interpreter. He's, yeah, he's referring to the other language, the um, the um, reptilian language that I that I spoke. Remember that I played for you. Yes, that was far away in the Taurus system. Yes. 
They are not even close to this planet. I was wondering how or why that was given to her. They were wondering as well. But there must be a reason, so... I believe this is my thought on the matter of that reptilian language, is that they will be interested in coming to Earth shortly because you are in your ascension and you are in your time of evolution and they will want to be there and understand this. So I believe they will come back around. Interesting. Are they from our galaxy? It's horror. I see. I want to do an experiment. Uh, let's say uh, I show the number. Uh, Sabrina, can you see the number? No. Wait. Yeah. And now, what number is that? Three. All right. Now, is, uh, is it clear? Or you need more clothes? Yeah, there. No, there, there. Because it was under the uh, the symbols for okay for the screen. All right. Now I will want to. Uh, can you see like that? Yeah. Okay. Now I will uh, hide our image, so Jim wouldn't be able to see. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Uh, can you read it in some language which is not? Human and let's see if Lakesh can translate it without what we've seen. And Jim, you, Lakesh, don't don't look at it. Just just listen. Okay. Quasha. Four. Oh, interesting. Okay. Now. Um. Three shua. Three. Uh huh. <laughs> now. <laughs> the numbers all wrong. <laughs> um. Show we one now. Skashua. Are they scrambling my signal? Uh huh. They are scrambling my signal. I don't know. Maybe. What it is now? Shua. One moment. Let me check with something else. I am speaking to Gukfignir about this. Just one moment. Okay. I guess they don't want me speaking. Oh, that's usual. When I do experiments, it always happens like that. I'm I'm used to that. Basically, we cannot provide the proof of uh, miracles. It has to be all uh, uncertain. So you can decide if you believe it or not. Now we give like a real scientific proof that it works, and they are scared. I need to get permissions all about that. You know, another miracle can be shown. Yeah, especially with that one because they they weren't too happy that I was able to speak it or. They were surprised. Yes, it is the blocking from Grok McNear. Why? Oh, I guess maybe we should speak a different language. <laughs> <laughs> One moment. Yeah, some of these languages, they have to ask owners of this language if they permit that language to be learned spoken. by humans. Yeah. Or, or spoken. spoken is one thing, but learned is different. Like Lirans want ready, Arcturians want ready. Uh, like uh, Tekur never gave us one to 20. We have had to get it from... from uh, Jaguar, so humans kind of already know the languages. You already know the language, but spreading it out is uh, has to get in you know, all the permissions. They do not have yeah. permission for languages to be spoken today. Okay. Why? I must find out why. Oh, thank you. And we get into politics. Yeah. Well, I, I take it easy. Just we we try, and, and you know they get all these bureaucratic approvals, and finally, too many languages being spoken. 
Okay. They do not want anyone to learn from the government. There are government people watching. I know. Oh. They need to learn. (laughs) They are trying to decipher the languages from the few words that they have been hearing. Of course. Oh. And they are not approving. They are actually blocking them as well. I see. But they cannot block them forever. Yeah. uh, But they want to block them until first contact, but they are not happy that they are able to decipher some of the wordings. (laughs) Because they can be deceived by these. If the government learns what is being said, they can deceive the aliens in some ways. Do you understand? Yeah. I un- I understand, but but the languages are important to us. But but the fact that they are being taught to us and not to them, I think, is important. Yes, and do not be afraid. That is not. It oh. is being only blocked because there is someone listening that is important to this. They yeah. have watching from a distance, and they do not want to give away any more of the words. Okay. But also, um, the the fact that we are given that proof to light workers inspires a lot of light work. Yes. And, And they have heard and understand that there are those out there that are speaking languages that they do not know what they are speaking, and some do. Some actually understand what they are saying at this point. So that is proof unto themselves. But they do not want to give this information to those who are not chosen for it. We are grassroots. We want all secrets out. Yeah, but I guess what they're saying is right now it's not a good time to do it. And another argument, say, those, those lot workers who know these languages, like Sabrina and Jaguar, they have been speaking those languages for several years, yes. and they were very unhappy not knowing what these are. They were thinking that they are they, getting we crazy. We did interpret some of the words, and they were taken back by these. And this is probably why today, last week, you had... Jaguar yes. interpret some of the words, and now this week that information is being used. Actually, it was oh. two weeks ago. Or, yes, it does not seem that long ago. So, so uh, how come? How, I have a question, in General, about the languages. How come they they taught us the languages, but no explanation was given. Like, I had no idea for five years. There are still some that do not know that they, why they speak. They have not found a way to interpret what they said. They have not found this site, or they're alone in their conquest of the language. They're questioning as well. But they will find us. Yeah, because I do not know why they gave you the language so early and then let you speak it for so long without any answers. However, things happen in their own time. I learned this. Uh, y- y- yeah, I mean, I I agree with that. It, it was just very confusing because. <clears throat> You know, perhaps, you start... they, perhaps they let you deal with it and think about it and perfect it a little because it was all confused at first. And the languages are now separating within you. There are three dialects of Pleiadian from different parts of their world that are all separating. Do you understand? Yeah. And now they're to a point where they are each becoming individual. And this is probably why this is the right time for you. 
that would Hello, be Hello, Lakesh. This is Brian. How are you, my friend? Brian, how are you? Hello, Max. How are you? Hello. Hi, Brian. Yes. Please ask questions. Yes. You're so generic always. Can you oh, ask oh. specific things? Yes. Well, my it's, this is according to my brother, Mark. Uh, he just wanted to know um, just the age and Earth years of the local universe. How old is this universe? The universe, the planet is 4.5 billion years old. So the universe is... We do not know exactly how old the universe is, but it is well over 100 billion years old. Okay. Oh, well, Milky Way Galaxy. Milky Way Galaxy is 85 billion years old. Wow. Uh, how about which of the bangs is it? If there is a, our Big Bang, is it second, third, first, tenth? It was second. Second. And some of the humanoids come from the first Big Bang, right? Yes. Those are the originals. What, what is their name? They are gold light species. Uh -huh. that come on strands of light. You are aware of them, probably. They're yes. al almost angelic in their form, but they are actually light beings that are the oldest that we know of. And they gave rise to Lyrans? They gave rise to everything. But Lyrans were first. They, break, they can break themselves off into pieces and and create things with parts of themselves. Fractal energy. Yes. Did the ange angels come from the first bang? They came from the second. Uh huh. But they were imagined in the first. Uh huh. And when the second came, they were the first beings to be created. So, so what is the main the I, I don't I don't want to say job but for for angels what is their they are messengers and protectors and givers of messages but they also have their own realms to watch over they are not just one planet that they watch but each have more than one planet and it's, they must be there at the times when they are so called upon to be by the Creator, or it is possible that those people from the planet can have a situation which requires their attention, and they will appear at that time as well. Everybody, please join the discussion. That's interesting. Um, I have a question. Does the angelic realm have a dungeon in it? No. Or something? It does not have a dun... Dungeon or judging? Dungeon. Because, like, dungeon. one time, it was a really long time ago, and I woke up, and I was somebody was talking to me, like, telepathically, I think, because I was in, like, a meditative state when I woke up. And they were talking about the angelic realms and how there was a dungeon or something, and I was like, what? It was really confusing, dungeon. but... Kind of is is that not a dungeon, dungeon within the angelic realms? There are such things outside the realm which are used by angels in some ways to keep certain spirits at bay at times when they are not to be active. This is Lakesh, is that kind of what they call in the Bible as like a purgatory, a holding area? There is no such thing as a purgatory. Okay. However, there, not as it is described in the Bible, but okay. there is a holding area, yes. Mm. But it is not the neutral area that you might think. Mm. It is not quite neutral because the people that are there are not neutral at all, and this makes it not neutral. That's the thing about the Bible. A lot of us get wrapped up as we're raised from generation to generation about shame and guilt and how to overcome that. You know, yeah. where does that shame and guilt come from? How is it 
you know, taught to us? Why is it taught to us? You know, is it to keep us informed? Is it to keep us to always do the right thing? I mean, like judgment, you know? Yes. The things that are lower vibrational are those things you must overcome yes. to find the things that you can appreciate that are higher. And those feelings, when they come to you, are those that actually, if you think about what they are, do not resonate as part of you, as the true self. And therefore, you bring your light out, and those things that do not resonate are pushed aside. Because and it's therefore, you must experience them to understand why the light is there. And when the light fills you and you become more obviously light-filled, these things do not resonate within you. Does this make sense to you? Yes, it seems like the more we get out of the fear of the mind, it just seems like more into the heart our true spirit comes out more. You know, we can be our true authentic selves. And when you become yourself, you are at peace. Yes. And this is the step right before enlightenment, mm -hmm. when you can move out from the body. And, and that's the other thing. That people yes. will see your light and feel your spirit in a dense way. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like. It's... The biggest hold also, I think, is the fear of what other people think. I think that's one of like what our families think, our friends think, when we're a light worker, when we are opening to more of ourselves. It scares a lot of people around us. Well, Jim was one of those frightened by it. Max had suggested he take his gift to the world. Thank you, Max. He was the very... Jim was very hesitant. <laughs> Jim yes. did not agree for some time. About three days. <laughs> <laughs> but Max, I want to say to Max, thank you, Max, for pushing Jim in a way. I, didn't push, I invited. I always invite. Yeah, I know. I do you, sometimes, but not this time. You've seen the potential. Thank you. Of the course. The cash. Um, I would like to know because I always thought that darkness came into the world, or shame, guilt, evil, quote-unquote evil, um, after the fall of man, when Lucifer sort of brought Adam and Eve away from their relationship with God. But then I realized that that evil, quote-unquote, or darkness, is has been in the universe long before Earth was made. Yeah. So where did, where did that originate from? I don't believe God is both evil and good. I don't believe That's a that. Question. There is good and there is negative and positive. You have labeled it good and evil. <laughs> okay, whatever. I need so, it, but where does it come from? Negative and positive is for balance in the universe. I'm sorry, I don't agree that night and day is the same as good and evil. No, it isn't. Night okay. and day are two different things from good and evil. Yeah, because night and day balance each other. But night, good has, doesn't... night is not negative energy. Right. And day is not positive energy. Right, so I don't We're see... We're talking about negative energies and positive energies. Yes, but you mentioned they're balanced, and I don't see how they're balanced. They are balanced because they have to be to exist. One can't but exist without the other. But the thing is now, we are coming to a time when perhaps the balance will be overthrown. And that will shift many things. It'll shift more into the positive. Yes. It still doesn't answer where it originated from. If it's God is the creator and is good, where did evil come from? It is okay. from the beginning. It is from the night. It's from, the, not the night, but from the dark. Where did the dark come from? <laughs> it, it has always been there from the beginning. The positive energy. The negative. You can't you can't see the light unless there is darkness. I don't believe you, that. You, I know you that's see that? 
No, no, I know it's a common no, understanding. But it, it's not on anything. How 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 would you be able to compare something for something? Do you see what I'm saying? If if you have if let's say um you say you have a good person. How do you know that that person is good if you have never seen anything else? I don't think it's necessary to see anything else. If good is good, it's wonderful and we don't Anyway, never mind. I don't want to get into a theological discussion. Well, I was just wondering where darkness came from. Thank you, Safira. Let's continue is, after the channel and we'll I discuss have to say it. Much something. Sure. Let it go for now because it will be understood later. Okay, thank you. Because what you ask is not an unfamiliar question. Many right. ask this question. Many ask, but they cannot understand the answer because it is not part of what they are, not part of the realm of understanding of God. And he is the one that created these things. And we cannot understand them truly as they are meant to be understood. But one day we will get closer to that understanding you understand? Yes, thank you, Lakesh. So I'd like to ask on behalf of everybody about the hybridization program. May I go there right now? Please do. Yes. Thank you very much. So, um, well, let, lot of some of us, many of us, had some DNA taken, yes. or or ovaries, sperm, whatever. So, has anything been done with those samples until now? They are in storage. Okay. Nothing has been done yet, but there will be a time coming soon. I believe that first contact will be the beginning of major hybridization as well. But they will do some before then. Mm -hmm. But they have to answer all the questions and get approval. Now that the samples, some of them have been collected, actually many of them. How many? There are many thousands. Thousands, volunteers. Yes, those that have actually said out loud that they volunteer. Thousands. Thousands. Unbelievable. Yes, it is. But they not all of them have been taken. But thousands have volunteered, and they have taken... Thousands of samples, yes. But that is what they tell me. But nothing has been done at this time. And, and first contact was supposed to be 2015, is that right? Did at we hear that point, they in are, one of the channels? They are negotiating the time exact. But 2015 is the year that they push for, hoping that much will happen during this year. For enlightenment. There is much more enlightenment coming out this year. Mm -hmm. You mentioned contact several times. It looks like something is happening. What is happening? With first contact? Yeah, it looks like some action is happening, some discussions. Can you describe more? There has been on the red moon on April 15th there was supposed to be a first contact there was some kind of successful contact with something that day it is not clear what but it was not a first contact on earth however first contact will be from the Yigil and there have been questions about this from many people because the Yu-Gi-Oh were the ones that caused so much pain to the Earth at one time, with abductions and things of that nature, experimentations. And, but I believe, I am not certain, but this is part of the argument for yu gi to be first, so that they can show that their ways have changed. They can show that they are a loving people and they were not understanding that Earth was such a diverse and feeling culture, spiritual, but now they do understand. 
That brings well, me. Oh, thank to you for answering my question. <laughs> you are welcome, Lakesh. That that brings me to another question. Um, it seems like the more as the hybridization programs, you know, go on, it seems like like Bashar was speaking on. It's yeah. more of the human will integrate generations from now. More of the species are going to integrate with the human, yeah. so you'll cause a new race to be born. You know. Yes. Yeah, so I, but a lot of also the reptilian, are they also their programs, their agendas, are they trying to integrate more of what love is into their own programs? Yes. The ones that are positive in their movement have integrated love already. Okay. The ones that are moving away from positivity and are more involved in self-importance and involved in their own needs at this time with more of a percentage of negativity than positivity, they will mo keep moving in that direction, unfortunately, at this time. They have no sense of how the good can help them. Hmm. I need a clarification on Yale. Uh, what percent of uh, abductions was done by Yale? One moment, and I will ask these do. Thank you. Seventy-two. Seventy-two percent. Thank you. Uh, people who didn't speak before yet, uh, please go ahead and take the floor. Lakesh. Yeah. Yes, Gabriel. What would happen to the people that doesn't like extraterrestrial beings on Earth, that doesn't feel comfortable about that? This is a scenario yet to be seen. But there will be those people, as you know. Yeah. We are preparing information for them that might be more helpful in them understanding what aliens are. And there will still be those that are uncomfortable, but we will not treat them any differently. Yes, and uh, they will not differently. I will be there someday, but not not at first contact. You mean you are planning on visiting the Earth physically? One day. Wow. Ooh, I must meet you. <laughs> that would be a brave move for you. It would, but I am learning much, and at one time that would be unthinkable. Have you ever left your planet? Personally, I have not. I see. Please go ahead. I, okay. I think, I think it's wonderful that be, even those, I mean, through our movies, through our television, a lot of, um, a lot of like what we call um, uh, UFO hunters or um, ancient aliens. These programs are really starting to open people up, and I think it's wonderful. I think the more of that that continues, the more that the public understands that we're not alone. And they should just look at the stars out there and just say, God, we're not alone, you know? There's They're more not. life out there. Yes. The logic of them putting it on the history channel. Yes. Yes. Was brilliant because people are now looking at it as actual history. Yes. Whereas before it was legend and theory and yes. unreal to them. But when it becomes history then they can understand it as something that did or possibly happen. Yes. Because their friends talk about it, and then they start to talk about it. It's the dialogue. That's why I love about Max. It's opening the dialogue. So, Max, for this, for what you've done, this, thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you. Uh, Gabriel, uh, Laini, uh, Hayan, and Gabriel. Jaguar, you didn't speak yet, and Suresh. What is it, Gabriel? Yeah, I, okay. I wonder, you told me about 
uh, or being put inside of me. Who yes. is going to do that? That will be from Gorkvik Nier. But it has not happened yet. What kind of, is it a technological orb or a live orb? A technological orb. Would it be based on implant or would it be independent of implant? Independent. So, uh, it is for certain individuals which need help with growth in some way. But it is a gift because it will bring insight and understanding. I cannot tell you more. Does any of us yes. in, uh, present uh, have uh, an orb inside? None of you do at this time. I wish to have an orb of you. There are those around <laughs> you I was that thinking that too, Max. That. <laughs> Max, you do know someone who has one. Okay. Is it Jim? No. I see. All right. But I will tell you later. Oh, thank you. That would be interesting. So that orb makes you happier. It yeah, I felt. It brings balance and understanding and gives you more of what you need to move forward. And it is a very wonderful gift. It will actually enhance creativity and things of this nature. It has many purposes. Can, can I, we... I will, I will know when they put it inside of me. You will know, yes. There is not a chance that you will not know. So that was like a gift. It is a gift, yes. Sophia, you wanted to say something. I, I'm sorry, yes. Can we all ask for an orb? Can I have one too, please? <laughs> <laughs> you may ask. <laughs> I need one, I think. It never hurts to, to volunteer. <laughs> never. Oh, sometimes hurts to volunteer, but I like volunteers. <laughs> Gabriel did not volunteer. He was chosen for the orb. Would, would you agree that I need one? I will not agree with that. Oh. <laughs> so. I don't want. Who, who should we speak to? Uh, like, yes, you have Caroline, Gabriel, Hayan, Jaguar... One moment. Suresh. Continue. Uh, and Suresh, we have Suresh, Sab uh, Sabrina, Ruth, uh, I mean, Caitlin, Jaguar. I'd like to speak to Jaguar, but do you have any how, Okay, I have a question. Um, how well does your civilization understand the one um, or God? I don't, I don't know how. How do we understand? How, how, long? how, how well do you understand, like, your grasp on it? We, uh, how would I explain that? Um, we have a great understanding of God and a great respect. We know how he works in the sense of what happens when he works, but we do not know how he does what he does. But we know that he can do what he does. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Now the uh, I, my only reference is from listening to Bashar that he talks about the one and he talks about all there is. Yes. Um, the being that they are in higher evolution than myself, they are fifth dimensional. They understand things about God that I do not understand in the fourth dimension. So the, when they speak about the one, I know they speak about the creator. Okay. Do you, what else do you need to know? No, no I, 
I was just trying to see what what how what your point of view, your reference was in terms of that, of really? the one, and all yeah. there is, and all there is, and there, they live in a circular dimension, which is all things are happening at once. So not everybody lives in that. Not there are many circular dimensions out there, but not every species lives within it as they do. They can reach out to any part of their lives in a circular way, as I understand it. Yes. And they can be in any part of their lives at any time, which brings me to think that this is confusing, it would be for me. So, so for you, not everything is happening on the now? The things that are happening on the now are now. Because the, yeah, because the way they see it, from what I understand, is that everything, it's hap there's only one moment, and everything's happening on that moment. Correct. That would be confusing for me. Okay, so that's, you don't share that view. I don't share that existence, no. Oh, you don't share that existence. No, it, I do not. It, I think it's, um, Sabrina, it's like everything is happening. Everything that you can imagine, it's happening, but it just depends on your perspective yeah. on where you're at in the universe from a point of view. It's kind of, it is for the mind, for the human mind, it's very hard to understand, but it's like everything is happening at once, but if, from what perspective? Yes, you see? and you can choose your perspective. And that's a hard one. Right, right. That one, that one's a hard one. <laughs> the, the grasp you your perspective, and that is where I differ from their dimension. I cannot choose my perspective in the same way. I can choose a perspective on how I see things and how when I turn in different angles, what is the images that come into my mind as just as you do. But I am not able to perceive anything beyond my time span without help. Does that I have. And, and that is because the density that you are in. Yes. You know, yeah. the higher the densities, the more fluid. Yes, oh. I agree. Okay. I have any. You know, go ahead, Sabrina. So, yeah, because he also speaks about density and dimensions. Yes. And so you, you're. His density is much thinner. As you move from the third dimension up into the other dimensions, the density is lighter and lighter. Do you understand? Yes. And so when you have less density, then there are more things that are able to be accomplished than with the heavier density. Does that make sense to you? Okay, but you can move up a dimension and you can only have so many densities within a dimension? There is only so many densities within a dimension, yes. This dimension, third dimension, is has its rules and regulations, densities and gravities. The fourth dimension has its rules, its densities and gravities. The fifth dimension as well. They are, have their own rules. Otherwise, they could not exist if all rules applied everywhere. Do you understand? Yes. And there then, are separations in the physics of dimensions, which you have not learned here in the third dimension. But we are getting more understanding of the the. dimensions of different dimensions. Does that make sense? Yes. So I, I, I have an um, equation I wanted to give you guys. Maybe you guys can understand it. Um, this was given uh, by another channel. Um, Trent? 
this is uh, UM, universal matter, equals PC, perception, choice. So universal matter equals perception, choice. This works between dimensions. Ah. Yes. That is why it is universal. Yes. It works between dimensions because although those words carry on through every dimension, the actual parent what is it called? Paradox? No. Algorithm. Ah, yes. The algorithm for each dimension changes. Mm. But it still uses the same kind of a system to get the right answer. Does that make sense to you? So it's like an overall universal system yeah. that comes down through the dimensions, that connects some way. Yeah. <laughs> I've also I've also heard of the black holes that they're not really a singularity. They're actually a push and pull energy. There's a twin on the black holes. It is correct. Ah. In many ways. You must understand that you are seeing it from one direction here on Earth. Hmm. One direction you see it from. But yes. nothing can take in matter and dissolve it and have nothing left. That is not possible. No. It's a recycling of energy. Yes. Yes. It is only possible for something to take in millions of tons and right. billions and billions of matter and not have any waste or release from yes. that. The uni so energy really Trans doesn't transform itself. It transforms. Yes. yes. Uh, let me tell you, it does become more dense, heavy, dense. However, not everything. Just as it goes through your system, mm -hmm. there, the black hole actually absorbs some things to keep it alive. Because of course, it is not not just a spatial anomaly. Anomaly. anomaly it yes. is like a living thing as well. Yes. And so it does absorb some of these things, and it does release things from the other side. Mm. Are those also so, portals? Dimensional warps or portals also? Stargates? They, they can be seen as such, but no one has been able to use them as such because there's too much energy. Um, I see. Have you ever spoken to a black hole or a star? I do not speak to stars and black holes. Or I know that they have their own energy <laughs> and sentience in a way, but because we can... collect their energy mm -hmm. as a sentient being in some ways. So we see them as sentient beings in some ways, but we have not been able to communicate with them, but we respect them. Does this make sense? Yes. Can you spice? Yes. So, so, so it, would a star be, so a star is self-aware? Within many stars, there are beings, just like there are beings on planets. Okay. Within what about our, our star, our sun? Our sun, your sun. Soul. Yes. I believe that there is life within every sun of some sort because life develops differently everywhere in the universe. And there are things that feed the sun, and therefore life is available there. Does this make sense to you? Yes. I've also, I've also, Lakesh, heard about the uh, four natural laws 
that we have scientists you know your weak gravity the nuclear gravity uh, the nuclear strong nuclear weak nuclear also the um, I've also heard there's another there's a uh, a weak interdimensional force and a strong interdimensional force yes ah what is your question it was just a statement <laughs> fourth dimensional energy third dimensional energy fifth dimensional energy that changes how the dimensional forces are encountered and used and perceived inside and it as a scientist in some small way I can tell you that dimensions change with the kinds of energies that are brought to them does that make sense to you and also a lot of the meteorites that have been taking place on the planet around the planet a lot more the past couple years um, also, I believe that those meteorites are carrying life, and they they're dropping, depositing. Yeah, seeding. Yes, but not in the way that you might think. Ah. They're not seeding populations, or they're not seeding with plant life or this kind of thing. They are seeding with what might be some people's idea of the beginnings of life okay the terraforming seeds sometimes would be mentioned however they are not terraforming they are to interact with the <laughs> life that is here at does that make sense to you yes so the density refers more to um, the level of, I, I, for lack of a better word, enlightenment on our beings? It does have a vibrational, yes, but enlightenment in completion is not for many dimensions. And in fact, right. there are some that doubt that full enlightenment cannot be achieved outside of God. This is one of the things that is discussed. Because, I can see that. Because you have, as you study half-life of radiation, for example, it never, ever goes to zero completely. Because it's always being recycled in some way, shape, or form. So therefore, their thought is, that was just one example, their thought is that pure, full, incredible, perfect enlightenment cannot actually be achieved by anything but God. And they're not even sure that he has perfect because there's always an evolution somewhere taking place. Yes, because. Yeah. And so you can reach heights of enlightenment, but there will always be some kind of impurity or something that pulls you away from perfect light. There, because you must experience something else to find sentience. Does this make sense? Yes. Total, total sense. Yeah, sort of like trying to reach absolute zero. <laughs> I would like to invite people who, who haven't spoken yet to speak up. Yes, Lakesh, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hello. Jago. Hello, everybody. Yes. Uh, yes. Hello. Um, I would like to shift, uh, if possible and if correct, uh, the the topic a bit. Um, uh, Max talked about uh, the importance of business and of organizations uh, for a future shift, and uh, I'm interested in your perspective on this. Um, instead of uh, 
seeing business and corporations and corporations as evil entities, as destructive entities that that they some of them have been so far. What would uh, your understanding be of our role as light workers, as star seeds, in helping uh, business organizations shift to higher understandings and become uh, positive? change engines if you'd like. You must prepare each other for the change. You must raise your vibrations for the change. But the change will have to happen before humanity is ready for it. Does that make sense to you? Yes. What is happening is that there, from the base of your governments you grow up and it becomes disfigured and strange in the bureaucracies. It's like the bottom of the tree cannot support the branches any longer. Does that make sense to you? Yes. They're intertangling all around the world. These branches are becoming heavier and heavier and they will finally collapse. Mm -hmm. and things then will change because the weight of this gigantic ungrounded political animal if you will mm -hmm. is so strong and heavy it cannot support itself any longer mm -hmm. therefore L has a plan L being a community of spiritual beings mm -hmm. that take their root from Elohim, El being God, but they are God-like and not gods, but they are close to being gods in some ways, but they have a plan to collapse your financial systems mm -hmm. because they see the weight of it cannot support itself any longer. However, in the meantime, before this happens, we must let everyone know that it's going to happen so they can help themselves prepare for this time. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes, yes, and I'm, I'm very interested in the practical aspects of how to build alternative systems and how to prepare the terrain for those systems oh. because it is those, in my point of view, and please share your... Uh, well, I'd like to tell you one more thing. Before yes, you, yes, oh, yes. Before you yes. move to that, Ellie. Yes, yes. There will be much and great destruction when this happens. Mm -hmm. But there's no other way for it to happen other than mm -hmm. this. Because those that are not enlightened will begin looting and killing to get what they need to survive. Mm -hmm. This is trying to be calmed by light workers. See, the light workers must help each other move from the cities. You will have a time period before the disaster where you can move away from the, the, the areas of disaster the big cities and the areas where people will find, think that they, they will be able to find wealth and beginnings. But you must move away before then, else you'll be harmed. And, and it's, it's, it's also never stop reaching out to those in the darkness and really just with, embrace them with love because it's going to take love to overcome all of it. It, there are many of you out there that listen, that are already being taught to be leaders for this time. Are you aware of that? Mm -hmm. I am. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I know that you some told, of you. You told no. me. Yes. That. Leadership will be necessary at this time. The stronger, the higher vibrational will be those in charge and those that know where to go because the message will come to them. 
they will but be my, able to hear the message. But my question is, can't we, before the system, as the um, build our own system before that other system collapses, so that we don't have to have the chaos that that they are predicting. This would be the ideal answer because light workers are already bound together in a system. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Light workers are already bound together. They the more you gather light workers, the less damage there will be. Be but the thing is if like right now we can talk through the internet yeah. and at that point we can't we can't you will be able to well before the incident and there'll be communication devices that'll be more advanced in the next five ten years yes but now is the time just reaching out to everybody and just and that's the thing it's just it's all verbal it's it's building dialect and community communities this is wonderful Thank you, Brian. Thank you, guys. I love all of you. I have to go now. Um, I, I have a, a meeting. I, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Brian. Nice to see you. Thank you. I love all of you guys. Thank you, Max. That's okay. Bye, nice location. Max. I am not going by choice. That's okay. Have a good day. Don't worry. I am not leaving by choice. Bye, Lakesh. Thank you. Bye, Lakesh. Bye, Lakesh. Bye, Lakesh. Much love. Much love to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Yeah, he struggled today. Hello. Welcome Jim. back. Hello. Oh, thanks. Welcome back. Hello, Jim. There were some intense points there. Where? <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. Oh, there's a lot more of you now. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Hey. Hi. How are you? I want to thank all of those of uh, that's done channels in the last couple weeks. Beautiful. It's, I've I've gotten more out of it than you, I think. Um, wonderful information, and you're beautiful people. I just enjoy it so much. Thank beautiful. you. Likewise. Thank you. <laughs> so you Ellie did a great job uh, advertising us uh, and advertising Minion. Uh, she posted videos, about 25 videos. I stopped somewhere in the middle. We have you know, what, about 60 videos, and I stopped maybe around 20, so she posted another 20 or so, 25. Uh, on uh, one a day or two a day, she posted on uh, about 10 light worker sites, and that's about how many light worker sites we have of that sort, where we have 1,000 or more light workers, actually. 600, 600 to 10,000 light workers. The bigger site is Ashtar Command, um, uh, these are all Ning sites, most, most of them, Ning sites. Ashtar Command has about 10,000 light workers. And, um, and, and, you know, Star Seed Network and um, the Warriors of Light and several more of I, those. It's been in my mind the last month or so, maybe even longer, that we need a light worker manual to give to those who want to they want to know what we do and how we do it. Um, there's nothing out there like that right now, I don't think. Is there? Yes. Um, but but I, is, is it, we are unique, so we need a yes. new manual, basically. Uh, but I want your help with that. <laughs> so um, I think that we are a unique, small society. But I think you have a lot to say, and I think that uh, you can help me with this project. Because we need to get a better explanation and a better handle on what we are supposed to do for the future and how to help others. Yes. 
Do you yes. agree with that? Yes, more and direction. It, it, uh, it also fits into your societal thing, the, I mean, bringing people together. If, if we can bring them together, re, at least in thought, um, and at least in uh, intention for a, a positive future, I think that would be great. You know, and I think also when um, first contact happens, I think people, there might be some panicking, but I think people will start flocking to places like Human Colony and looking for answers. Yes, exactly. And I think that uh, having something, you know, people might not have time to be here during our webinars, and if they have something to read and connect to, and some of your ideas and the people that are here and are loving and good, I think that it would be a wonderful thing. I would, I would say that we could together write something like that. We should. We should do that. Yes. And if we, if we have a good idea, then we could actually uh, sell it, maybe for a small price, and send it out to them. So... Uh, because if there's no price on it, they find no value in it. Mm -hmm. But Jim, is that does that resonate with you? Mm -hmm. yes. Jim, yes. I would like to propose uh, a title, uh, just an, a thought that came through when you were speaking. Uh, what to expect in uh, in first contact, for example, or oh, something yeah. something along those lines. They would definitely be part of it, but it would also be more hard to be how to help others raise their vibration, how to help you raise your vibration, how to, you know, how a lot of people do not know how to reach out. A lot of people do not know how to do that. How do you show it to what? To each other. Uh -huh. I've been in several sessions where they talk to me and say, what can I do? I'm isolated. I, there's nobody around me that understands what I'm going through. However... Lakesh and others were able to give them ways to move out into their community. So, with his guidance, to hers and others, I think that the, all of us can do that. Don't you think? Yes. Yes. Uh, anybody has more questions? Uh, somebody, uh, some people never spoke. Do you want to speak? I will just say that I will post uh, the Ning site in the Human Colony site. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah, that helped a lot, Eli. Um, Jim said that you know uh, some of the people who uh, ordered his private sessions were new, and yes. apparently that came from your postings. Basically, you go post our videos, people see them on their sites, which is like uh, Lightworkers uh, Ning sites, and uh, and yes, they sir. come and find our site, read the page, and then contact Jim and order the session. That's I what happens. Am, yes. Um, That's an interesting song. It's like, yeah, it's like somebody's <laughs> patting <laughs> So thank you for doing that. Yes. Uh, we got a lot of donations this week. Thank you, uh, guys, for keeping uh, the yes, donations. people that we never heard of. Yep, actually. yep, yep. Um, we've got a donation this week from someone we never heard of, and someone that said they watch the, but they yeah, uh -huh. don't come on. So. Uh, also, we, we want Thank to make our colonies on other Ning sites, basically. It's nice that we have that site, but basically you see that it is unstable. I'm kind of keeping it up, but it would be nice to have a colony on one of the light worker sites, so, so you know we can't be harmed by if, if that site goes down. We still have other place of landing, mm -hmm. so please uh, suggest your favorite light worker sites, and we'll kind of explore that, and maybe we can uh, invite Nick. people there. I didn't see Nick here today, is Nick? Yeah, Nick wasn't there. I have to call him and see how he's doing. Um. <coughs> Ruby, are you silent? And Sahaj, hi. Um, I have tons, tons of things to talk about, but I just wanted to invite. Okay, uh, Lainey, how is everything on your side? Yeah, fine, thanks. Oh, good. 
some, some, something I wondering about is uh, people are going to see that other people have more connection than themselves and they feel left behind yeah. being jealous and you want to become more like have, having more stuff and becoming more advanced yourself but you don't want to make people feel bad that they don't have that well yes that's one thing with the light worker they don't condescend they they are they lift up but they don't condescend they they more when their level is lifting up they're pulling other people up with them and they're not they're not looking down on them they're pulling them up that's how i see it does that make sense yeah, that's how I see it. About uh, God, um, uh, all that is, um, the one. I, I, I always, uh, when I speak to uh, uh, different beings, I always ask them, what is your perception of all that is the one? And uh, every, every, almost every uh, race which I speak to, they have their version of God. Uh, except I think I maybe spoke to one or two at least individuals, but they also have their race, have have uh, understanding of God, but they are kind of rebellious and uh, are not associating with that. Actually, this wasn't through Jim, it was, I think, through Zachariah. Zachariah is kind of uh, living in... His, 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 his vibration is a bit shifting away from the religion. It's more like... Uh, fighting that uh, you know past religious past, so he is more connected to aliens who are also on that side of uh, basically be, being rebellious. They accept existence of that, but they want to be independent. That's basically the, by by choice. And um, in many channelings, especially I think the the, the best one was the Law of One. Uh, there is several books of the Law of One, and uh, there they kind of uh, ask. You ask, say, you speak to Lakesh and ask him to speak to someone else above him so that you can contact him. What do they say about him? All right. Gabriel, Gabriel, you are making noises. <laughs> All right. So uh, so the, they ask, you know, say, we ask Lakesh to speak to someone above, and that would be someone from fifth dimension. And someone from fifth dimension will ask someone above, what do they see up there? It's you know it's an interesting so so at some point what they say is so generic it's really hard to comprehend what they say. Uh, I guess the closest. Go ahead. I'll be right back. Oh sure. Have to drink. Oh good. The closest uh, you know the most detailed one is uh, the Urantia book. Uh, I don't know if you came across. It's a huge book and it talks about the structure of higher worlds. It's so boring but so detailed. Basically, for every structure, they have to create a name, which that mean, means nothing to us. So a lot of words, a lot of structure, and, and some of that is actually reflected in Hindu, Indian um, um, mythology, which, which is uh, which is also huge in structure. Then, and um, I believe much of that is right, but it is so distant from our life, so it's really hard to understand. So the difference between the one and the creator and all that is is basically all that is cannot do anything because it is all that is to become something that can have experience it has to forget it has to divide make the first impulse of division you know light and dark or some, some sort of uh, duality. The, the duality has to exist for you to experience because if you are everything, there is nothing can happen to. If there is nothing outside to you, if you are everything, there is nothing that can happen to you. So to have first impulse, the first duality, the first spark, uh, you have to divide at least and forget something to, be, to to experience at least something, and then it goes to become more and more sophisticated. I, I guess that is from Bashar. Yeah, because Bashar. For, for Bashar says that the one it's not self-aware, but uh -huh. Uh -huh. but <laughs> my question was if it's not self, it had to have become self-aware <laughs> that it was that it was it was only it that it, only it existed. Uh huh. And I'm calling it it because I don't know what else to call it. Go ahead. Um, yes. Um. 
so that's that's what I can't understand because if it's if it's not self-aware you can't say I'm the only one here let me create do, do you see yeah that doesn't make do sense. you see the conundrum that yeah it 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 doesn't make sense so at some point it it must the impulse something in him must have moved in to make him at least self aware to that point to right. want to create outside of itself in order to get to know itself. But unless, he said, unless it just divides and that's how it creates, but um, that wouldn't make sense either. Really. Or unless there is something outside of it which kind of gives the first. Right. Push. Right. Stimulus. Right, because he says Bashar says that all there is is the one that is self-aware. Oh. Ah. Okay. So that I can't comprehend really. It's it's the other part of God. You know that's oh. um all there is is all there is. So, but I, I don't know quite how that works. If all there is, it's inside of the one, or if it's if it, it's connected but they're separate. Yeah, Bashar will probably have to answer that one. Uh, Reverend Moon explained to us Reverend Moon explained to us that love came before life and within God there was the male and female aspects and there was a, a need to share that love, a desire to share that love mm -hmm. and create so that there was an object of love to give have give and take with. And we have that same co-creative ability and and that love which is within us, that incredible love which we don't know where it comes from, where it goes, but it's so powerful and so wonderful um, that is part of that original creative love that was at the beginning. That's one explanation. doesn't explain the, the logistics or the technicalities but the motivation. Yeah. Uh, Great are the books, uh, The Explorer Race by Robert Shapiro. There are several books, I think about 12. Uh, and uh, there, are, there are channelings of uh, Friends of Creator and by Jesus and uh, his friends. And uh, basically, um, our Creator seem to have friends and basically they don't communicate much to each other. they kind of independent. But, but uh, <clears throat> I mean, the whole universe, our whole universe in multiple dimensions have been created by this creator, but it's not the only creation. So there are multiple creations and they kind of have uh, a little bit of talk to each other. They uh, Things come from outside of the creation and there it was said that Jesus came from outside of that creation. So every time I speak to different <laughs> entities who communicate with Jesus, I ask, did Jesus come from outside of us? Uh, oh, yeah. As, as an energy, as an impulse. So, so it looks like there is an exchange. So, uh, I really like. Uh, okay, I really like two things uh, about that. First, there was an incredibly interesting posting by uh, of, of Roxy. Roxy speaking. Uh, it was a council of um, collective consciousnesses. Oh, I watched that. Yeah. You did? Yeah. And I remember there was uh, a human collective, and there was Arcturian collective, and a few other collective, and Syrian collective. And um, basically, one of the things they explain is that, uh, say, there is global human collective, Earth human collective, and there is a local collective of, say, New Orleans. And New Orleans chose to have that flood and disaster as a boost for their um, spirit, collective spirit. So they, he said the lives were lost, but the spirits which kind of left the vessel, they came back again. So nobody basically, so that, that was not a complete loss. It was just uh, a temporary yeah. step back, setback. But but he said that that boosted the whole uh, love for the city and the whole economy and vibrance of the place. And I'm a little bit connected there, so I, I, I've watched, you know, I spoke to people who have been there during the flood. They watched the flood, you know, come into their third floor, and um, I have been there after the flood, so I have, I have that feeling. And uh, so these are the bastards who give us trouble, right? The, 
local collective and global collective. And um, and how they choose and they choose big troubles and they uh, and and in that uh, Roxy um, recording uh, they discussed uh, showing the ship. Uh, Arcturian said, "How about we unclock our ship, which is on the outskirts of the solar system?" And they said, "Oh yeah, we don't object." So there was a vote in there. All those collectives they voted and thought that, uh, and uh, and then somebody else discussed. Um, how about we give a, they call it cr creative conflict or something like conflict. So basically, when you look at your horoscope in the newspaper, you would read something, a personal message, hey Max, how are you, or something like that. And then you look at it again, and it would say something else. And they would think that you get, get uh, going nuts. And you know that's again a trick they are starting to play to speed up our ascension. Yes. Well. And, and it happens to me all the time when I look at my phone, one of the apps is open that I never opened, like the piano or the music or something. It's it's open, and I have never opened that. And my computer turns on by itself all the time. In the middle of the night, I'll wake up, and I'll hear the... You know how that makes a little sound when it comes on? Yeah, yeah. Um, in the middle of the night, you have to push a button. You have to push a button to to turn on the computer. Turns on all the time in the middle of the night, right around 3 a.m. So I can fix that. Huh? I can fix that. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, there are miracles happening. Like I wanted to share last couple of days that was just incredible experience. Nothing supernatural, but so many unlikely events happened. I spoke, uh, you know, I came out, I contacted people, I spoke to tons of scientists, I think, many, many scientists, and uh, and to do, do like high-level scientists, and uh, we submitted two grant proposals in uh, uh, yesterday. So things just came. Uh, somebody was uh, really helping me to get to get things done, and when I kind of took too much of myself, my you know keepers, angels, they uh, solved the problems for me. Say, I committed to five meetings, and I was able to only to do two meetings. So they played on other side to cancel one, to bring together two together. So it all happened perfectly. I messed up as much as I could, but um, not intentionally. I did mistakes. Mm -hmm. Max, uh, I, I, I was cheering for you. Uh, thank yes, you. We all are, yeah. <laughs> and then I uh, wanted to, to to make another meeting on Friday, and they canceled that. And so on Friday, uh, I didn't was able to submit by deadline. Wasn't able to submit one of the grants. I got an extension, so I submitted for 37 minutes later, and they accepted it. So all went uh, incredible. Awesome. 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 Yeah, and um, there was. Mixed with that, there was tons of negativity, mm, tons, like um, bad things happen here and there, and I say, here is bad thing happening, and here is good thing happening, so how I block black th bad things and play with whatever cards I, I got, so bad cards I put away and play the good cards, <laughs> and ignoring that was sort of ra ra rather easy, I would say, yeah, I say, this guy is be did bad stuff to me, so I'm playing a chess game with him. Now I do that move. How about that? And he <laughs> does his moves. And then I, how about that? And I secretly move another thing. Mm -hmm. And we play this ch chess games. You know, he did all the bad moves, and he he was in the position. He is like top, 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 top shark. And I think I will be possibly working with him. I'm not offended. You know, basically, if you if you if you uh, <laughs> how, how, how do you, <laughs> you started playing this game, you have to play the by the rule of the game, and I understand him. I mean, that's how he got to the position of being uh, mm -hmm. somewhere in the top. Now that kind of comes closer to Sabrina's question: Do we, or no? It was someone else. Someone else. I think it was Gabriel asking, maybe. Uh, you know, should we go with the corporations or not? Oh, it was Jaguar. It was Jaguar. Yes. 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 So, I'm uh, very 
I'm very interested in the practical aspects. Uh, although I've spent quite a lot of time uh, uh, considering the metaphysical and exploring that, those domains, nowadays I'm more focused and more attracted to grounding this knowledge, practical, everyday, and cl uh, close future, you see? Uh -huh. How to shift in my life and in the in the my sphere of influence. That's what I think is very important right now Super. for me. So for grounding, I did meditation. I went to the lake, Durand Beach. It's beautiful, Ontario Lake. You can see the other side. And I put my Reiki down right under the ground and say, send Reiki down to earth. And the energy flew really well. I felt the energy going. I did it only for a few minutes, but... There was something new to me, just doing Reiki on Earth, sending the energy. I feel now that energy flowing, and, and I felt at that time even stronger. Uh, another thing of grounding is just feel the physicality. Just pay attention to physical. I'm always kind of somewhere else, and here is physical gym, physical microphone, physical you guys. Okay, well, you're remote, but... <laughs> Still physical. Breathe, breathe and feel now the physical part of it. I think that is one of the you know one of the first steps of grounding. Eating yes. food in a way that you pay attention to what you eat, looking at the food, feeling its physical aspects. It's it's very grounding. Uh, counting the money and counting the time, I think, is very grounding. Yes, Max. Uh, when I say when I say grounding, those aspects are important. But I, I was talking also about grounding the knowledge, grounding the understanding of the metaphysical, bringing these higher vibrations, these abstract concepts into everyday life, into practical, um, actionable uh, aspects. You you see yes. how to how to relate, how to conduct business how to manage everyday life, you see? That's that's my, my current focus of, of yes. interest. Practical right. things, right. things I can act upon. Not right. just think upon, not just feel about, but act about. That's right. Very good. Because Lakesh has been saying to a lot of people that they need to be grounded. A lot of people in this day and age are living in their head. You know what I mean? They're just... They're thinking a lot of things. Exactly. They're not, they're not grounding all their thoughts. They're, it's all up here. And um, he was telling them, ground yourself and move up. Don't live up here all the time, but you have to move, live in the entire body. So you ground it and bring, it, bring the, up the chakras. And... Um, and then when you get up here, it'll make a lot more sense. It'll be a lot more clear. It'll be a lot more uh, usable. So, exactly. Okay. That's it. That's it. okay, grounding. Uh, there was a, someone who wrote to me. Actually, last week, a few people came to me, and some someone. Uh, I will post the, his his uh, letters and just. Re so he was very sort of into negative, saying, "I'm suffering. I'm lonely." Bad things happen to me, and now I see the whole world goes to nowhere. There is a new explosion of some infections, and the whole thing will end. And how can I live with that? And my answer, you know, it, it's a little kind of stumbling. What can you answer to that? And my answer was, you know, don't worry about that. If something, if you can't do anything about that, just ignore it uh, completely. You pay attention a little bit so you're aware, but, you know, what cards do you get? You have choices, lots of choices. Where do you go? What do you do? Play with the cards you got. Don't worry about things which you have, uh, have no control about. Say, so forget about the global problems. Think about what's as at hand. What do you want to do? Like Lakesh says, what's your highest excitement? Uh, for me, uh, I, and it's always uh, another like kind of quote which really helped me was, uh, basically things, brave people do things not because they are brave, but because they understand better. I, it was phrased a little bit b differently, but basically the learning component of bravery was, was as a scientist, was, was important for me. So I hated salespeople, and I still hate big component of sales, like especially going, buying a car and people approach you or, you know, buying the uh, 
of real estate, you know, any salespeople, they're kind of, you know, lying is, uh, deception is their profession. And I always was kind of rejecting, and even the business component of science, I was rejecting the deception in that. And then I just, you know, go farther and farther in this, call it rabbit hole. <laughs> so I have uh, two marketing people working with me, uh, partners, and, you know, that's their profession, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, their, their language is cold calls, warm calls, warm introductions, hot introductions. So cold call is, you know, when somebody calls you and tries to sell you uh, a cruise on uh, on a you know somewhere. Uh, they have no clue who what, what they want. They no clue that you're unemployed. They still want to sell right. you something. Uh, warm introduction is when Jim says, you know, meet my friend. Uh, hot introduction when uh, sub uh, when uh, Sephira says, you got to meet them. <laughs> right? <laughs> you got to do it right now. It's yeah. very important. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right now. Right now. Right. And that's really good. And you know, sometimes uh, and uh, and that is driving business. And I've met with few real millionaires, multimillionaires, and felt how they, you know, they're and first is they're not they're not they're normal humans and the they possibly have some component which make them that, but there is also a lot of learning and knowledge. So they think differently because they have been cooking, have been cooked in that medium for many years, like for 20 plus years. They, they really kind of uh, stick well. They, when they meet, they speak special language. They have understanding. And now I, I start to understand what's their way of thinking. They, most of them play these chess games and. They're very nice to some, and sometimes they make checkmates and kill people. I mean, kill financially, so <laughs> take money. Uh, no, not physically. I don't, don't speak to those who kill physically, but you know, closing a, closing a company and getting you know 50 million from that, you know, would be a, a more successful, uh, desirable thing they they could ever achieve. And then that that's their way of living. You create a company and then sell it and fire people and that's you know the process there somebody giving me a feedback who is that um that's okay uh so max i'd like to say that my son benedetto is studying marketing and sales and he refuses uh -huh. to get involved in anything which is unethical so it's a hard it's a hard way to go when you want to find Somebody who has uh, very loud speakers, please move them away from microphone or just make it quieter. Hello? No, yeah. it's still the echo. Somebody is making echo for us. I don't know who it is. I don't know. I understand. I uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm kind of trying not to lie, but you know, deception is big there. At least keeping secrets mm -hmm. is, is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. Even our mm -hmm. friends uh, just do, and like Kiesh have to keep secrets. And mm -hmm. even our uh, beloved Takar is keeping secrets. It's it's. Uh, I don't think keeping secrets is the same as being cheating deceptive. people. No, no, I don't think it's deceptive. Um, uh, you know, sometimes they say something and look at you, and you know, you can't really tell them that you know otherwise. Is it deception? It's you know, some sort of deception. So uh, anyway, I, I will move forward. Yeah, I understand there is a big ethical problem here, and uh. uh my excuse that I'm I'm wishing well and I'm I really want to develop certain uh, therapies which will move the humanity forward in many ways. One way is by healing people. Second way by teaching people of uh, existence of supernatural healing energies. It's like a Reiki machine. Yeah. And third third is by uh, just be thinking about that. My uh, you know, when it becomes to market, it will kind of raise the vibration of it. Uh, so I, I, I think, and, and also my company would employ Jim and other light workers who would work, uh, will work on, uh, on those healing technologies and transdimensional technologies, and it will be close to energy technology, but more, mostly into uh, energy healing technology. So one thing I learned is, like from speaking to these sharks, they say, here is what you do. You 
uh, get a promise from uh, some fund that they will kind of match dollar to dollar what you will raise. So get that promise. Then you wave this promise to in front of other people and they would want to invest either their money or time or commitment or energy and then you grow this commitment until it kind of materializes. So it's manifesting a dream in that very very uh, business, modern business like way. Like there is a Russian joke, two Russian businessmen come and one asks another uh, how much would you pay for a truckload of apples and he says Another one says million rubles, and they shake hands, make a deal, and walk away. One looks for million rubles, another walks for a truckload of apples. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I, uh, I get a promise from some fund that they will possibly fund me if I find more money, and now I, uh, I have that sort of weak promise, and I email to people and saying, here is my project, here is my grant, which are your interest in science. Uh, we just need uh, you, know, you to collaborate to offer your name, only science name. And big sharks don't respond to that. They, they possibly don't even read that. But smaller people like research assistant professors, they meet with me. And some of them really call me and push, you know, they really want to meet with me. And I have the title of president of a company. And have a website and the videos, and uh, you know we speak English actually. My my partners speak good English, so so we meet, and they introduce me to their bosses. So that worked like charm, and I guess you uh, I do that and get more money and support me and Jim. How about that? <laughs> now you speak. <laughs> I forgot to ask. My daughter Jessica, who lives in Korea, she's very concerned about that ferry, which um, there was a big accident, and I don't know how many people died. She wanted oh, to know if that was ferry. Okay. Yeah, in South Korea, and she wanted me to ask Lakesh or Takur, uh if that was a providential event or was it just pure stupidity. And I forgot to ask if anybody comes through later, Jim. Can you ask that for me, please? Yes, I will. Thanks. Yeah, for God. Oh, She's going to be upset. Uh, is still around. He listens yeah. to, the, to the broadcast for sure, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so you'll hear that, yep. Yeah. That's good. I also wanted to ask him why I don't need an orb, because I think I need one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if Jim, he was saying that um, Gabrielle, I think, would get a techn technological orb, which would help him move forward Gold. and be creative and, yeah. And I was like, hey, I want one. Can I have one, too? <laughs> I need that. And he's like, I said, don't you think I need one? He goes, not really. He said no. And then I wanted to ask him why. Oh, no, yeah. you didn't ask him why? Well, I wanted to, but I think Max thought I was talking too much. So he said, <laughs> next. Max said, next. <laughs> I think, I think you know, it sometimes can create more problems than helping you. So the idea is the orb will help me. So if it will, will not help you, they can't put it inside of you. Yeah. If you have some belief systems that are bad yeah. about that. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe. I just I know I have a lot of power. I have powers and I don't know how to use them. Or so I would love that to be sort of like all released and all my blocks released. Oh, I think that that will happen eventually. I mean, that, <laughs> eventually is the key word there, Jim. <laughs> we well, want it now. I'm sorry. You know, we're all impatient for things, but <laughs> I'm too yeah. old to wait too long. I have got to I, use my powers I I now. Like you have to wait. Like, you know what? <laughs> I've been very much at peace with myself for oh, a, for a while now, so. And things are happening that are really good, so I'm, I'm glad about that. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Good things are happening. Anybody wants to discuss any more questions? I have the uh, I have a new idea, uh, which yeah. I will write idea. <laughs> it sounds like, oh, dear. I oh, have dear. an oh, dear. You have a dear? Oh, that's sweet. We discussed it. But before that, well, let's go. Do we have any more questions so far?
Max, I would just like to make a remark, not a question, and say yeah. just by observing you, it's noticeable how your frequency has changed regarding uh, your projects, regarding money, regarding um, your moving forward. It seems you're more at peace also, like, like Jim said. You're more at peace and you're moving forward and that shines through. I'm very happy to see that you're, you're, you're you're shifting. It's noticeable. You're more more alive. You seem more more positive regarding those things. So, Good. more power to you. It's nice to see. It's beautiful. Yeah, and there's always always a question. You know, how much of that is due to my personal uh, choices and evolvement, or and how much of that is my guides kind of uh, or star something outside of me? Obviously, we are interconnected, but how much of physical of achievement of a physical mind is that? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I always pay attention to learning component. But really, I learned a lot. Now I'm not in Russia. You know, we all are like kind of crooked, hooked, crooked, crooked. Yeah. Uh, we are especially in science. You know, when I meet Russian scientists, we all kind of moved uh, in that position. We kind of have to show respect to superiors and. They start teaching it from kindergarten, even the parents and the family. You have to like really respect people. Uh, so when we saw like a director of a school, we always kept, you know, I was always blocked and like an animal in a learned helplessness position. Learned helplessness is the term psychological. And now I just learned, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that you know, no matter how far you go, you can speak to an angel or to. Tucker, who is really, really way up in, uh, in all, in all spiritual uh, power and so on, and uh, you can feel equal because initially we all, all one, we all, you know, the branches of the same tree. So now when I speak to these millionaires, you know, I, uh, yeah, something's interrupting is not a good. Uh, uh, my, my, I, I'm uh, habitually like try, try to compete and uh, interrupt people when I. Think I know better, but you know I have to hold myself. So part of that is is learning to swim in these waters, and part of that is clearly, I don't know, manifesting things, manifesting, and I kind of play the game. And you know, some of these chess moves were really fast. It was like I get a mail, and I have to do this move in uh, within a few minutes. Or when you speak, it's like a fraction of a second. They really ask you a question, and one of the questions like was really tricky. Like uh, you know, that most rich, pe uh, the the highest of so far people in uh, you know success asked me, how many people like me have you met before? <laughs> and it took me a few days to get an answer to that. I answered something, but it was kind of mumbling, saying, oh, everybody is different, everybody is unique. I've met some people before." Mm -hmm. But uh, but he was really the richest. So the answer, the true answer, no, you are the greatest. You are the richest. But you know, if you want to play that game, is it the right answer? He was thinking that if you said no, then he would feel more comfortable. <laughs> but what what would be the good chess 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 move in the game? Showing confidence. Yeah. First, it was understand. It was a test. It yes. was a mm -hmm. He ran another mm -hmm. test. He said, "Oh, I'm stupid, and you are so smart in science. How do you uh, answer to that?" No. Uh-uh. So you become humble then. <laughs> <laughs> I am in this position. You're in that position. <laughs> Obviously, you know more about it than I do. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, th th these are things which happen like now, like a few times a day happen to me during this meeting. Like, uh, so. What's your new idea, the... Max? What? What's your new idea? Am I done with that? Yes. <laughs> uh, no, you were going to tell us your new idea. Uh, the new idea, so uh, I feel uh, Jesus and uh, Buddha said, you know, you have to keep your oaths. Oh. I invited the questions from people. People asked questions, and then I failed to uh, even propose these questions to the aliens. And part of it was because Lakesh was messed up. He, he, he gave clearly incorrect questions but but um, I just realized what we should do we should read the questions aloud the ones which have been asked after the session 
and next time they come, they would pick and choose what to answer. Because I think we are being listening, uh, being listened. Yes, probably. I know that Cash is listening now because he always listens. After he's here, he always stays and listens. Or usually, not always, but usually. So what do you think? All right. <laughs> um, so, Brian. Hi, Max. Is Brian? Brian. Brian is not here, right? Brian is in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Is it uh, public information? Now it is public. All right. Hi, Max. Uh, would you like uh, uh, Would you like to know about the new or old ETs, such as Camilopardalis? Camilo Pardalis. Camilo Pardalis. Camilo Pardalis. Etonians. 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 All Deborans, all Deborans, all Kites, Chitox, Regal, Centaurs. I think Centaurs are called Centaurians. And these aliens on Earth, or uh, are these aliens on Earth, and are they about join Earth? Is Earth people total frequency at about 25%? Is this true, and is the Earth structure unstable at this time? Um, I am just curious about the new of aliens races, Brian. Anybody comments on that? I would read, but I think if we just uh, move uh, kind of consci consciously kind of digest this question, they become more uh, yeah. vibrant and then they can, can uh, answer. It sounds complicated. There, there was a lot of questions there. Yeah, really. Out of those, most of them I don't know. Regal is just a star, so I, I, I see it on, it's a pretty bright star. It's on the uh, sky map. I don't know if it's northern or southern hemisphere, but I can see it on star map. So I never came across Regalians. And Centurions, I, I know some about them. I research a little bit. Uh, they, at least, you know, I don't know. Every star possibly has multiple races, but the ones which I s learn about, they are very advanced and they keep in touch with Earth. I think they are very barely physical. They are maybe six or so somewhere around six density, multidimensional, but uh, six dimensions. So they are they can uh, have a body, they can create a body, but they rarely use it. Basically, they're more like spiritual than, than physical. What about the the thing that is the earth unstable at this time? I think from all the things that I gather, it's more unstable now than it's been in a long time. However, they're helping us keep it stable. Uh, the energy from the center of the galaxy was quite strong. And I, it's supposed to be helpful, but it, the first initial... Uh, waves of it were pretty strong, and so I think it was not helpful at first, but I think it will be. So, uh, here is my uh, another thought, which I wanted to bring up: uh, Minecraft. Uh, are you guys familiar with Minecraft? Minecraft from, from mining. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you are. So Minecraft is uh, something that started a few years ago, uh, and it has. So many parallels with uh, uh, spiritual, physical life on Earth. Basically, it's the first game which is developed uh, collectively, uh, and it is a very collective game. People come together on servers, and it's not created by a single company. It's created by tons of volunteers. So the volunteers finally, like they created Wikipedia, tons of internet. Now they create the whole world in uh, computer space, but it's created by volunteers more than by uh, a company which ha which rules the game. The company kind of gives it the, the background, but then people have lots of choices what to manifest in that game. And then they come and play there, uh, and they get given different powers, they create different uh, things, and one thing they create there is, Sophia, it's to answer your question, they, they create evil there. They create lots of trouble. Uh -huh. You can play different uh, different 
levels of uh, difficulty. One is creative, like being a creator or being in a very friendly environment where the worst thing you can do is you can dig a hole, fall down, and kind of things fall on you, like the sense. I mean, if you, I mean, but other than that, you don't have any problems. And even if that happens, you just start a new life from a, from a certain base in that world. And that world is created every time it's created for, you can create a world just by clicking a button and a few minutes you get a new world created there automatically. And you can choose if it is more snow, more rain, more greens, is it on the south, and so on. How many uh, landscape features you can have, and you can create even villagers there. So, so a lot of that is happening there. And but people choose, even my kids, to choose ch choose to live in in a harsh world where you have can kill each other, where there is a lot of evil happening, and there are different bad ghosts which you have to fight all the, all the time. So. Uh, this is kind of uh, a model of creation. You are playing there in Minecraft, and you kind of choose a condition which kind of makes you excited and gives you give you challenge. Uh, very few people uh, have fun playing in the creative mode. Most of the kids go. I, I love playing in creative mode, but most of the people go into survival mode where they they uh, have, you know have a challenge living there. And the same about our souls, which choose to come to Earth. Why don't we choose to come to Era? I don't know. <laughs> or become, you know, elsewhere. Why do we end up here? Bashar says that the reason is, you know, there is billions of people here because ascension happens right here, right now. That's, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, turning point of ascension. I can yeah. say something about it, Max, when you're... But um, I've listened to Arhenjo Michael, and in one of the channelings, he mentioned that uh, here on Earth we have the creativity that other civilizations and extraterrestrials does not, because they have chosen to develop their spiritual paths, paths and that's why uh, they're like observing us, and they are fans of what we create here, because we have all the free will. Earth is a free will zone, and we can do whatever, literally whatever we wish. And uh, we have a lot of fans, so to say, all around the galaxy that are watching us and uh, enjoying what we do, some of us, of course. So the creativity we have on Earth is priceless, and it's something that others are, maybe they, they are more developed, in some sense, but they do not have this creativity. That's it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, how much do they watch us? So Bashar said. Bashar was asked several times. You know, do you guys have there like television and movies? And he says, No, we we come and watch you instead. <laughs> and I took that as a joke, but <laughs> but uh, when I spoke to the Karai, and it seemed very real, he said that on Era, our favorite planet, Pleiadian planet, uh, around Tageta star, we don't, do, we know exact coordinate. Uh, Pleiades, Tageta, Era, like I think, one of several planets there, and uh, they are tall humans, like seven, eight feet tall. According to the Karai, they're much taller, but according to our Pleiadians, they're seven feet, seven, eight feet tall. And um, if they come to Earth, they would look like humans. Maybe they have to recolor their skin, but it's easy for them. So he said, when we when we invented cell phones, they kind of they all had all sort of telepathy and communications. But it became a fashion. They like for different. Fa we know for for a fact that they like fashions. They wear different clothes, different color of the skin, and have di different gadgets. And according to Zachariah. These gadgets are alive, and you can play with them, much, do much more. But when we got cell phones, they also got the cell phones. <laughs> uh, so, uh, because their hands are much bigger, they, their hand, the cell phones also are much bigger, more like our tablets. But now they, you know, they carry these cell phones, and they do miracles with those, but they have that you know, shape and form. So, so it looks like we are really being watched. It's not just a... a joke, they they really kind of pay attention to what is happening right here, right now. Well, I know they watch me a lot, because 
I in the middle of the night I'll hear somebody downstairs. I'll hear them come upstairs. I don't ever see it hardly any. I I only saw one you yell once, but I see like shadows and things, but I never see them, but I hear them. And some of them are breathing over in the corner and I can hear the breathing and I just know they're there, but it doesn't bother me. I just know that they're all around. Yeah. Sit down here in the kitchen. I heard them open the cupboard doors and a pin <laughs> fell out once and they had to put it back in. So ask them to leave Jim, ask them to leave you breakfast one day when you yeah, wake really. up. You broke me breakfast, jeez. Yeah, I know, right? You're here. At least pay some I, rent or I, I remember hearing because I can't hear my neighbors. There's two houses joined right in the middle. But she's not home. She stays at her boyfriend's house a lot. So I hear whatever happens, and I can't hear anything on her side. But in my downstairs kitchen, I heard them open a cupboard and a pan fell out. And I went, it startled me. I woke up, and I go, that was a pan falling out of the cupboard. I knew exactly what it was. And um, I heard, I heard, and they put it back in. So close the door. Wow. So, um it's just like that kind of thing. They're always, they're downstairs, they're upstairs, they're everywhere. So I think with Liney too, they're right, Liney. They're around you all the time, right? Yeah, apparently, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do things like that happen too? The pants falling out or doors opening or? Not for me, no. Um, hmm. They're no. looking at my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> They're curious about my stuff. Yeah. Uh, I would like just to say something because I have to go soon. Um, oh. Just to, to remind everyone um, for the crystals. The crystals are very important. Yeah. To have them at home, to carry them in the pocket or whatever. If, if you can get a crystal, it, it would be very nice. Very I, nice for I, them. Every day when I'm doing meditation, I have them all sitting out over here on the corner where I have my chair, and I work with different ones in different days. And uh, today was Jasper or Mukaite or Mukite, mm -hmm. and that was a wonderful, wonderful thing for me. I like that. When I test the crystals, I hold them in one hand. Yeah. And I put another hand, and I kind of make circles, move around, and feel. And some crystals are way stronger in focusing the energy than from one hand to another. Kind of flows and focuses, yeah. and I can feel it. And I just pick it like like that, or just hold it. And if it makes you happy, mm -hmm. it's for you. If it doesn't make you happy, it's uh, right. it's not for you. Yeah. 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 I've actually gone to sleep um, with one in my hand on a few occasions. One night, I can't remember what stone it was, I had in my hand, and I, I obviously had my hand up by my head because I heard like a voice say to me, take your hand, or, take it away from your head. So I took it away from my head, I put it down, I think. And another night, I had a different crystal. I had a, one of these trigonic crystals in my hand, and um, I heard another voice saying, I was just about, I was so tired, I was just... I was kind of a, um, in a sleep state anyway, sort of thing, but I was so tired, and, and just as I was just had enough, I just had it, had it in my hand, I heard a, a, a male say to me, um, he said, um, oh, you, would you like me to show you how to use that? And, and I just thought, oh, no, I'm tired. And that was it, I fell asleep. <laughs> uh, about these voices, uh, during these two days, I had the decisions, which I had to make the decisions, and... I had an idea and I didn't know if it came from me or from above and sometimes that it would be like a sharp move in a chess game and it might offend my, my uh, partner there which also made sharp negative moves so I kind of sensed and asked my intuition and sometimes I felt really really sure that I had to do that right away and I did it and it worked fine mm -hmm. and on other days, I do similar things. I mm -hmm. bought, bought a car with a, with a falsified wrong title, and that was a half a year trouble. I couldn't get, you know, there was no car. I couldn't drive it. So, but at that point, I didn't ask my intuition, actually. I asked my wife. <laughs> and uh, so asking intuition is, is um, 
And it was the answers were pretty strong at that point. And some point, the, the answer was, it doesn't matter what you do, do whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, but on the other hand, it was a you should do that, and I I, I did it, and it's worked fine. Mm -hmm. I, you know, check mark. It was kind of grant submitted. Uh, the collaboration started, and then it might work uh, further. Uh, Max and Jim, I don't want to. Sure. But I need to go. Yeah, um, I understand. I would like to remind you. Uh, you could have set up recording today, right? At Jim's by Jim's laptop, so channel channelings can be recorded. Is that true? What do you mean? Oh, so uh, on Skype. Put the recorder on Skype. For channelings. Oh. Today to put the recorder on Skype. Yes, please. Not please today. Please. Sorry. Um, today is my uh, son's birthday. Today is my son's birthday. I got got to go to. Oh. Okay. It takes time. It takes a uh, couple hours. It's it's Happy not easy. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Michael's. Yeah. Michael's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Michael. And I'm okay. here. Uh, all Those right. Well, thank things. you for being here for, on your son's birthday. Maybe so sure. maybe next week, right? You well, can do that. That would be yeah, awesome. We should round. Uh, we could uh, should round this up then. All, All right. right. God bless everybody. I have some more questions, but uh, let's read them uh, after, and uh, I think your son is important. important. Your son is important. Yes. Okay. God bless everybody. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay. Good <laughs> <The> blessing. <laughs> Say a blessing for for the close today. Oh, I'll wait then. I'll wait for you then. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to just say thank you for all those that were here and helped with this wonderful session and for your knowledge and understanding, your love, your compassion, your goodness. We thank God and ask Him to be with us in all that we do. We praise and thank Him for all the things that we have that we take for granted a lot of times and we just ask that He be with us during the day. And we, we know that the aliens are there and they want to help us and we just thank God for that as well. And we want to move forward in our vibration. Help us to do that as well. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Amen. See you later. Oh, see, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 love. Much love. Bye. Much love. Bye. Bye. Take care. Have a good week. <laughs>